I'm not ashamed. What is the lesson of the fig tree? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Matthew on walking through the Bible. Nurse of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Matthew chapter 21. We're going to be reading from verses 18 to 22. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves, and said to it, Let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. We're now into the final week of Jesus' life. On the first day of the week, at the beginning of this chapter, we find Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He was treated like a king for the only time in his life on earth. The chief priests and scribes didn't like what they saw and basically were pleading with Jesus to correct the people. But he would not, for what they said about him was true, even if the chief priests and scribes didn't believe it. Matthew now turns to events on Monday. Jesus had spent the night in Bethany, a town not far from Jerusalem, as he had friends there, Lazarus being one of them. On the way back to Jerusalem, Jesus got hungry and wanted something to eat. That Jesus hungered here again shows us that even though Jesus is God, he is also man with fleshly needs. In chapter 4, we also found that Jesus was hungry after 40 days of fasting, so just like us, Jesus needed to eat. Along the side of the road, Jesus saw a fig tree with leaves on it. We must understand that in Palestine, fig trees put out their fruit first and then their leaves afterwards, so that by the time the tree was in full foliage, the fruit should be ripe. This tree, though, had no fruit. From Mark's account, we find that the time for figs to be ripe was not yet, so many marvel as to why Jesus expected to find fruit here. However, from Josephus, we learn that in that region, figs could hang on the trees for 10 months of the year, so leaves that Jesus saw would have been older leaves, and thus he was expecting to find older figs. This fig tree, though, had none, and thus was unfruitful. Jesus had no use for the tree, and thus cursed the fig tree to never again bear fruit. This is the only miracle of Jesus, as far as I can tell, that involved cursing something. But he did so to teach his disciples a lesson, a lesson we'll get to in a few moments. Verse 19 says that the fig tree immediately began to wither away. This again appears to be at odds with Mark 11's account, for it wasn't until the next day that the disciples noticed that the fig tree had withered. Again, let's remember that Matthew isn't giving us a chronology, but instead condenses this account together as to preserve the teaching. When verse 19 says that immediately the fig tree withered away, that doesn't mean that it happened all at once, but that it began to wither away and would be completely withered away the next day. Understanding this make the, makes the disciples' reaction in verse 20 make much more sense. They, sa they said, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? They had seen Jesus perform miracles before, and the miracles were always immediate. Yet since this one wasn't, that's why they were amazed. Jesus had cursed the fig tree, but nothing happened immediately, so the disciples likely weren't expecting a miracle. Yet when they came the next day, the fig tree was withered, and they were amazed that it would wither so soon by natural means. Of course, it didn't wither by natural means. Jesus had, in fact, performed a miracle. What was the lesson here? Some will come along and say that Jesus was teaching about the absence of fruit makes the outward show of religion empty and useless, and that this is the reason Jesus cursed the fig tree. And while this makes for a good illustration, one that is scriptural, that is not what this passage says that Jesus is teaching. Rather, Jesus is using this to teach the disciples about faith. They were amazed at how quickly the fig tree withered, but Jesus said to them that if you have faith and do not doubt, they could say to that mountain to be cast into the sea, and it would. Was Jesus speaking literally? Perhaps, for the fig tree actually did wither. However, symbolically, Jesus was teaching them that with faith and prayer, they would be able to do whatever God wanted them to do. If a mountain needed to be miraculously moved, they could in faith move that mountain with God's help. If they needed to perform miracles in order to confirm the word, then in faith they could do that, God's help. Prosperity gospel preachers use this verse to teach that whatever you ask God in faith, he will give you. First of all, Jesus was speaking to the disciples only, not to everyone. 
But just like it is with us, God will only answer prayers that are in accordance with his will, as 1 John 5, 14 says. If John the Apostle wanted to perform a miracle to glorify himself instead of Jesus, God would not allow him to perform that miracle because that wouldn't be in accordance with his will. God was not a genie for the disciples granting all their wants. However, he would be with them and provide them with the things they needed to accomplish his will. The same is true of us today. God does not promise to give us everything we want but he will give us the things we need to live a faithful life. Let us thus use what he has given us for his glory and the expansion of Christ's kingdom. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's question and answer edition, seeking to answer the question, is God really all-knowing? The Lord willing, on Monday, we will return to our study of Matthew, covering Matthew 21, verses 23 to 27, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.